thank you so much for coming today. Um, my name is Erin Gilton and I'm the communications advisor here in the Faculty of Science and I'm going to be your host today. Um, so thank you so much again for coming um, and to learn about how our programs in data science and analytics might be right for you. So we know that the demand for digitally skilled professionals is rapidly increasing in our country. Um, there's a projection that more than 2 million Canadians will be working in the digital economy by 2023, which is coming up very soon. And that's why we in the Faculty of Science launched our postgraduate programs in data science and analytics, including the new Masters of Data Science and Analytics, which was just approved this year. So before we start our information session today, a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, we definitely want to hear from you guys, but we're going to mute all the microphones just to make sure that we have the best sound quality and um, that our guest speakers will be audible. Um, I also want to take the opportunity to acknowledge the traditional lands of the Blackfoot and the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta. The city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. So I just wanted to also let you guys know, I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions coming up um, be, like as you listen to the presentations, you've all been pre-screened by us um, to make sure that you have met the um, initial requirements for admission into these programs. So if you have any specific questions about your personal eligibility, um, please send your questions to prograd.science at ucalgary.ca and you'll see that email is in the slides a couple times there. So just take a sec to maybe note that down. So this afternoon, uh, I'm pleased to connect you with our program directors from the Data Science and Analytics program. Joining us um, are Dr. Jim Stallard and Dr. Usman Alim. From our instruction team, we have Alberto and, uh, from the Cummings School of Medicine and Ray from the Haskane School of Business. Uh, we also have our program coordinators here today, Carrie Thacker and Stephanie Patterson, who are just off camera right now. Um, they're going to be busy taking your questions and uh, collecting information throughout the presentation. Um, also, one of our recent grads is going to be here to talk about his experiences with the program and how he's taken his career to the next level with skills and knowledge he gained in the postgraduate diploma. So special welcome to Dustin Tang, who is now a data analytics specialist at Unix. Later in the program, you'll get a chance to ask Dustin questions about the program from a student's perspective. Uh, can you advance the slide, please? Great. So I will hand this over to Jim and Usman. Thank you, Erin. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope, uh, I hope you're doing well. In, in our current pandemic. Um, so what you see in front of you is you see the structure of the professional program in data science and analytics, which is now officially a master's program in data science and analytics. It's a stackable certificate structure. Um, if you are interested in, in completing this program starting fall, 2020, uh, fall 2021, excuse me, uh, you start off with completing the four courses in the certificate. Uh, so this, the four courses in the certificate give you a very good foundation of both computational methods uh, and statistical methods. Uh, it acts as a springboard to one of the three areas of specialization. Uh, so after you complete the certificate, you can springboard into either the data science specialization diploma the business analytics specialization diploma and the health data science and biostats diploma. So we have a representative from each one of the Haskins School of Businesses, business, excuse me, which runs the business analytics specialization courses and the Cummings School of Medicine, which runs the health data science and biostatistics uh, specialization diploma. So after that, then, uh, then we reconvene in to complete the master's piece. Uh, so the master's piece consists of two vital components. The first is an integrated topics course, what is essentially what we like to call sometimes a residency course. So it's a two-week course. Um, the content of that course is, is th about 30% of it is advanced topics in data science. So you may be, do may be doing something like a module on advanced Bayesian analysis or advanced time series. Uh, those are just two examples or, or advanced uh, data visualization. Uh, the majority of that course centers on uh, building up and strengthening your soft skills, so communication skills, uh, leadership skills, 
uh, project management skills. Um, uh, so that, that, that component is, is, uh, is very attractive to many of the potential employers we've talked to. So once you finish the integrated topics course, then you launch into an internship or capstone project. Uh, and after you complete your internship or capstone project, you have a master's degree in data science and analytics. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the two of the courses in the certificate, Data 602 and Data 603. So Data 602 and Data 603 are more statistical centric. Um, through these courses, um, you, are, you basically start at ground zero and you pick up some in Data 602, you see a little bit of review from a stat course you have taken at some point in your undergraduate um, uh, career. However, uh, because, of, uh, because of technology, we are not using tables in the course. Um, in addition to uh, being introduced to statistical modding, modeling and statistical inference, uh, there, there is an emphasis on simulation-based inferences, which requires uh, intensive computing. Uh, so you will be exposed to, to some programming. Uh, the platform we use in Data 602 and in Data 603 is R or R Studio specifically. Uh, we're out of base R. Um, in Data 603, so you build upon your learning in Data 602, you concentrate more on statistical modeling. So you will be exposed to uh, multiple linear regression, some non-linear regression, one Y, many Xs. Uh, you will also be exposed to data that, how to analyze data that's been collected in a controlled environment. So you'll be seeing statistical models applies to apply to data collection that's been conducted underneath some type of control scenario or in various experimental situations. So that encapsulates essentially the statistical aspects of the certificate. So I would say that data 602 and data 603 each are equivalent to approximately one and a quarter to one and a third undergraduate courses. Um, so it's quite intensive, uh, but uh, that's, that's one of the purposes of the program is to get you through uh, and you could basically finish everything, you finish the master's in 10 months. So I won't speak anymore. Uh, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Usman. All right. Uh, thank you, Jim. I'm Usman Aleem. I'm a co-director of uh, the data science and analytics program. Uh, associate Professor in Computer Science. So I'll talk a little bit about Data 601 and uh, Data 604, which are the two uh, compute-centric courses in the certificate program. So Data 601 is, uh, will introduce you to the data science ecosystem with uh, a sort of a, a Pythonic uh, view of uh, things. So you come in with, uh, when you enter the certificate, uh, you would already have a course in programming. So this course starts and Data 601, I've, I've been involved in the teaching and, and uh, the, the design of, of this course uh, for a couple of years now. So it starts off with uh, introducing you to Python and uh, we, we cover all of the essentials of Python uh, as well as some more intermediate concepts that you need to, to work with data. Then we look at data sets, particularly in 601, we are focusing on uh, tabular data sets. So these are data sets that are in uh, CSV format or Excel spreadsheets, uh, but also things that could be converted to those formats. So we look at libraries that will help you work with those uh, data sets. And uh, the focus really is on exploration of data. So we will look at uh, visual exploration tools, visualization methods, charting tools that will help you gain insight, gain a better understanding of what's in your, your data set. So that's really the focus of Data 601. It's going to run in tandem with 602 in the first six weeks um, of the fall term. So you take both 601 and 602 as a pair. And the idea is that if there's a project that you're doing, so you'll be doing projects in, in uh, almost all of your courses. But if you choose a particular data set in 601, you can uh, continue to work with that data set in 602. And then that same pairing sequence, 603, 604, those are actually running right now for the fall uh, 20 cohort, where they're taking 603 and 604. 604 is about exposure to big data as, it, as the title uh, suggests there. So you'll be exposed to 
SQL, MySQL, NoSQL databases. So working with a lot of data at the, the back end. So the focus again really is to get the, how to work with these backends, how to work with these databases and access data from them for the subsequent analytics uh, purposes. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so that's that was the certificate. Now we have three different diploma specializations uh, as of um, right now. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the, the core data science uh, specialization, which consists of these uh, courses that you see up on your screen. Uh, again, with uh, here the idea again is that we're building your foundation in both the computational side of data science as well as the uh, statistical science side of data science. But with we don't really have a particular domain specialization like the other uh, two specializations that you'll be hearing shortly about. So data 605 is more advanced to data visualization concepts. So in, uh, in the certificate, you're exposed to mostly very structured types of data sets. Here in, in the uh, diploma specialization, you'll be exposed to additional types of data, text data, as well as additional uh, tools for visualizing data, uh, some, some applications such as Tableau, which is uh, very, very popular in, in the data science space. So you'll be exposed to that. And also kind of doing uh, the full uh, workflow, starting from the beginning to the end, where you start with a particular data set, you explore it, and you're conveying information, uh, insight that you've gained from this data to stakeholders. So 605 really focuses on, on, on that. And then 608 is a continuation of the big data concept. So when your data sets are becoming really large, when you're not able to fit them on one computer, what sort of an ecosystem or, or a compute infrastructure is needed to work with those types of data sets. So data 608 really focuses on that, as well as some sort of uh, linking the back end and the front end of data, right? So there is a whole pipeline where on the back end you have databases which can be really large. And on the front end, you have the analytics tool and the visualization tool. How to bridge that back end to the front end is uh, what Data 608 uh, is going to focus on. And then I'll hand it over to Jim, who will talk about Data 606 and Data 607. Uh, thanks, Usman. So in Data 606, um, you are, uh, you're building upon your statistical knowledge that was uh, that was obtained in data in the certificate piece of the program. So in data 606, you're looking at at how to generate data uh, in many different forms. So for example, um, in the past few weeks, there's been there's been a lot of media attention and quite a bit of scrutiny about the inaccuracy of polls. Uh, how do you how do you sample from a population? How do you sample a population of voters? Uh, to try to accurately predict who will win some election, whether it's a local election, a provincial election, or a federal election. Um, so there are ways to do it, and there are clearly not ways to do it. Uh, so one of the one of the aspects that you pick up in Data 606 is 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 how um, if you're if you need to conduct a survey for your clients, um, how do you do it? How do you ask questions? There isn't art to asking questions. You don't just ask any particular question. Uh, so you learn a bit about the methodology of how to ask questions to ensure your questions aren't double-edged uh, or confounding questions. Uh, how do you how do you design a survey in thinking about uh, thinking about what the structure of the data is going to look like and what type of statistical methods you want to apply to the data? There are various uh, where you, how do you weight the responses because there are what are called sampling weights. One individual in your in your response may be weighted more or less. Than other individuals in your in your survey, um, you also learn a little bit more about categorical data analysis and and uh, and prediction models associated with categorical data analysis in Data 607. So this is this is really a, um, this is really a, a very interesting course in the sense that you do pick up statistical or what is commonly referred to as machine learning. So you're using some tools uh, such as TensorFlow. Um, working with training data, revising training data, continuing to update your models, continuing to revise your models. So again, this builds upon the, the aspects of the statistical aspects that you've seen in, in data 602 and data 603. And you learn uh, uh, what the difference between supervised learning and unsupervised learning is. Uh, and you also learn a little bit of um, uh, 
Bayesian analysis in terms of uh, clustering. So, yes. So that that kind of culminates the the data science specialization. Uh, I'll hand it over to Ray, my wonderful colleague Ray, who is somewhere in the mountains, um, and um, he will talk to you about the business analytics specialization. Thank you, Jim. So in the um, business specialization, uh, and maybe I should preface this by saying that in all three of the diploma specializations, uh, we're getting at the same topics uh, from different angles. And um, uh, so we have the uh, uh, predictive analytics and decision analytics is 611 and 612. And, uh, and, and then the uh, 613 and 614 are, uh, uh, 613, uh, it's such a great name. I came up with that name myself, Jim, uh, Introductory Data Analytics. It's essentially data wrangling and it uses a lot of R. Uh, so we're very R-centric in the business school. And um, although we do use other tools as well, but 613 and 614 are, are both very much uh, uh, R courses. Uh, and um, the uh, advanced data analytics is the AI uh, course. Again, as I said, 613 is uh, more the data wrangling. 611, 612. Um, so uh, 611, the way I would describe it in a nutshell is um, the introduction to artificial intelligence. And, uh, and then 614 is the advanced uh, AI and machine learning. 612, um, this is a class where we do deviate a little bit from the, um, uh, from the uh, data science version of the uh, diploma. And um, in the business world, uh, a lot of analytics, uh, we might say unfortunately, but it's still Excel-based. So uh, 612 is, is an Excel-based class, uh, excuse me, class. Uh, so that uh, you can learn how to do uh, decision analytics that the rest of the entire organization will uh, be able to understand and use and, uh, uh, and integrate with. So that's uh, our four courses in a nutshell. Um, Jim, is there anything that I missed? I don't believe so, Ray. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, uh, thanks, Ray. So next or on deck is uh, is Alberto. Uh, so he is a biostatistician and he is one of the instructors in the health data science and biostatistics specialization. And we also have um, uh, Tyra Williamson, who's been pretty busy working COVID numbers for the province these days. So I will hand it over to Alberto first and foremost, and he can talk a bit about the learning outcomes and the types of things that you're going to see in the health domain. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Usman. Thanks, everybody. So, uh, welcome. Yes, so, uh, you know, in the health specialization, uh, and I think I can talk a little bit about obviously data 621 and also 623, because although they don't necessarily uh, run parallel uh, in six weeks, et cetera, with at least with the previous uh, instructor, we do a lot of we are the first part that that is a little different from everything else is thinking of the epidemiology basics health related part of modeling of outcomes clinical sense of everything right so both in the big data in health as in the advanced statistical modeling ideas of confounding ideas of uh, of issues also with ethics of data are touched on and then we move on forward to getting into, you know, a little bit more of the categorical data and other, uh, there is obviously a review of logistic uh, regression and some of the things you do on, uh, on the previous courses, but we move into counts, rates, uh, survival analysis, uh, use of, uh, of splines, things that have to do with within the linear paradigm, the generalized uh, linear paradigm, still trying to attach non-linearity effects uh, that happen very uh, often in, in health. Uh, we touch on things of, you know, 
don't just go dichotomizing your variables because few things, all right? Try to get as much of your data. Health data is important. And uh, we touch both on prediction as much as we do on, okay, most of the time in health, you're trying to see which variables may be influencing or which profiles define the people that you're seeing suffering certain things. And uh, I don't know if, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, pretty much it. We do some advanced modeling uh, all around. I think from 621, that's uh, pretty much what I can um, happily tell you. Great. Thank you everybody so much for all of that information. It's a great overview and sets us up nicely to talk to Dustin who has taken the program. So a lot of prospective students ask us uh, what the student experience is like what can a student student who graduates from what any of these programs um, expect and wonder what kind of jobs uh, might be available after graduation. So to speak to that, please join me in welcoming Dustin Tang. Dustin's currently a data analytics specialist at NMAX and completed the diploma in data science and analytics. Are you here, Dustin? Oh, there we go. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, like maybe just to give a little bit more background about myself, I'm a 13, I, I've been working for 14 years now and I've always worked with the data. And before I really entered uh, uh, this program, I was real, I just worked with the data for, very, uh, for various oil, oil and gas uh, companies. And um, I really wanted to have a little bit more insight on not just getting the data for people to make decisions. I wanted to understand how we can make these database, data, database decisions for our, myself. And, you know, writing Python code is really easy and even making a model is really easy, but it's hard to really understand the numbers that come out of them. And I think that's really what I was trying to get out of this program is really understand the theory of it and understand not just getting the number out of it, but how do we take that number and make, improve it and make it an even better model. So that's one of the things that I really got out of the program. And the other one is really understanding big data because when, when I were in my particular um, part in the oil and gas industry, I, I didn't really work with huge amounts of data. I would work with thousands and thousands of rows, but I was thinking about millions and millions and millions of rows. How do we deal with that? And there was the, the um, there's a lot of exposure to the idea of what is Hadoop, what is Spark, why are these concepts faster? And it really exposes you to those um, type technologies like the Amazon AWS um, and Google platforms that they have as well. Um, and what you can really get out of this program is, okay, you understand what a random forest is and you understand what a neural net is, but how do we really evaluate them? Because just because one is fancier than the other doesn't necessarily make it better. And those are um, like a lot of the concepts that I really got out of the program. And I think that was really great. And um, as well, just to kind of talk about my own experience is that um, it, there are a lot of networking opportunities within your own classmates as well. And that's something that I really have been able to leverage off of. And I really enjoyed it. And there's a group of four of us who really hung out with each other. And all four of us actually, since the program, have actually found new positions. So it is something that um, employers are really looking for, that you're willing to put the time and effort into branching your knowledge and delving into the system that people really want. And especially in this new age of COVID, for um, uh, for four people to get new positions is actually pretty impressive. So, um, yeah, and that's basically all I had prepared. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Thank you, Dustin. Um, I, we have a couple of points on uh, the slide that's being displayed. So, um, wondering how did the program help you on your current career path? Were you in data science before your job at NMAX? Um, what's your personal story? So my, per, like, I, I kind of alluded to it a little bit is that I've always worked with the data and it helped me expand my knowledge of not just getting the data, but what are, what kind of decisions and what kind of uh, techniques do we do on the data to m help drive better decisions. And it really, for me, I always felt of it as more of a, not a direct, career directional change, but more of a widening of 
changing lanes, so to speak. And it really opened up my, I, um, really opened up my idea, uh, my mind of what I'm capable of and what we can do. Absolutely. So, um, as a, a data analytics specialist, um, what, what would like a typical day at work look like for you? Um, for me right now, I, I spend a lot of my time supporting the business in what, in some of their decisions as well. And when they ask me, how can, what kind of, where can I get this data or what can I do with this data? I have to explain to them what they're, what they're really looking at because sometimes they might, there might be a misunderstanding of what is available and what they're getting and what they're doing with it. So it helps me speak the same language as them um, because sometimes it's a, the, the nomenclature is not the same um, especially coming from a computer science background, I just go, yeah, I can, I can, I program, but you know, when you have like a little bit of this knowledge of statistics and uh, that modeling background that helps a lot. Absolutely. So um, one of the exciting developments um, from the university is the new master in data science and analytics. Um, are you planning on taking the master's program? Yes, I am. Awesome. I am. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I think it will be really good to help um, kind of put a, a, a bow on everything we've kind of learned um, because everything, all the classes are really related and they all kind of build up, build on to each other. And, but it's really nice to kind of have a project and um, a course that will just sum everything up together in the end. Absolutely. Great. Um, so those are probably the last words from our presenters. So I would like to leave the last uh, portion of the presentation for you guys um, to have a chance to ask some questions. So I'm going to hand the reins over um, to our program coordinators and um, program directors who will be able to take some of the questions for you. So I see that we've got quite a bit going on in the chat. Um, does anybody have some questions that they'd like to come on mic and ask? Oh, hi, can I ask a question? Yes. Okay, so I would like to know, like, um, is there any um, funding in the master program, like TA SHIP or RA SHIP or any uh, other kind of funding? Okay, Carrie or Stephanie or anybody, are you able to take that one? Uh, I can take it. Uh, as it currently stands, uh, no. So we don't... Uh, uh, we don't have um, funding supports for, so technically you would be a graduate student. However, uh, we do not have funding supports in terms of uh, you would, you could work as a, as a TA or have a GA t-shirt or anything of that nature. So, no. I'll just add to that, that uh, if you're coming for the master's, then a lot of the internship positions uh, uh, will, will be paid. So you, you will be able to uh, get some funding that way, if you get a if you get a, a paid internship position, yes. So one of the other questions in, is when is the deadline to apply for the fall? I don't have it right offhand. It's typically typically in the past it's been mid mid April. Well, Carrie just posted that on in chat. It's uh. February 1st uh, for international applicants and then domestic is April 15th. Excellent. We have another question here. Could we take a computer programming course through private institutions like Udemy? I'm guessing for meeting the prereq requirements. So we do have students take courses through alternate means besides the University of Calgary courses that I listed. There are a number of requirements that those courses need to have, however. Um, so what we're looking for is the courses need to have a similar learning outcome to those that are listed as example courses. It needs to be an accredited institution. Um, we have had things from Udemy. We also have had EDX. Um, the course needs to be evaluated or graded in some way. You need to be able to produce a transcript or other sort of documentation that proves your completion. And the course needs to be a minimum of 30 hours in length. So I can also add that to the chat just so people have that written down. 
Great. Some excellent questions are coming up about the internship component of masters. So from Amanda, we have my background is in engineering and I work in the oil and gas industry. Do you have any suggestions on how I could justify to my employer that me taking this program is valuable to them? Anybody able to take could, that? Could you repeat the um, uh, question, please? The, the, uh, the sure. industry specifics? Sure. So uh, Amanda is in engineering and works in oil and gas. She's yeah. wondering if we have any suggestions on how she could justify to her employer that her taking this program is valuable to them. So Amanda, uh, I, I don't want to be flippant here, but uh, data is the new oil. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's uh, we're seeing lots of applications in um, in the oil and gas sector, uh, and uh, it, but it's not really limited to the oil and gas sector. Uh, the thing that I would say is it's every sector is being uh, significantly impacted by the opportunities that being able to um, work with data and get insights from data and all these opportunities are just emerging uh, like flowers in a field. It is, uh, you know, the sky is the limit at this point. Uh, but it really is up to each individual to figure out how to integrate what they learn into their own uh, industry and their own organization. Oh, correct me yeah, if I'm wrong, but I, I believe as part of the internship, um, you can do your internship at your place of employment. That's correct. So. And, and yeah, and maybe just to add to that, I think, um, especially with the oil and gas industry, industry, sometimes there's so many um, aspects of it that are just tied to these SMEs and, oh, I think this is how it should work or how this should work. Now you went with a program like this, it allows you to really show the data that you no longer are driven by um, just how it always has been. Now maybe you have some data that backs it up and um, it allows for a little bit more automation that into your particular position as well. Great. Another question about uh, the internship component, how long is it expected to be and would we be assigned positions or find one ourselves? So I just uh, answered that in the chat. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, but I'll just uh, just quickly reiterate. Uh, the minimum requirement is 200 hours. And then we also have an internship office in the Faculty of Science that's working very closely with uh, our other internship offices around campus to help students find placements. Great, thank you. Another question um, from Amanda. What qualities are you looking for in applicants? Well, there's there's uh, there's obviously the 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 ability to um, do well in the last two years of your undergraduate degree because you do have to you do need to be accepted to the faculty graduate studies. Um, but we're looking for uh, working for applicants that are curious, um, working for applicants that that are interested in taking real world problems uh, and formalizing them in a computational or statistical uh, way and using using data to assess and carry out such such investigations. So we want we want you to be curious. We want you to be passionate. Now that's not something you can impose on somebody, um, but um, if you if you really enjoy what you're doing, if you're really passionate about learning from data, being able to uh, tell a story, tell a data story. Um, uh, then, then, then your individual study won't be, in my opinion, won't be viewed upon as, as work. So we want you to be curious. We want you to be passionate about something. Um, yeah, in short. Great, thank you. Um, question uh, for Ray specifically from Spencer. Um, he says, my undergraduate degree is in business analytics here at UC. Do you feel that this is a good enhancement of knowledge from the undergrad degree? In other words, do they work well together or do you find a lot of overlap between the two programs? Right, that's a great question. So <clears throat> there's uh, between the required courses in our undergraduate degree and the data science and uh, business analytics diploma, 
uh, up, you know, the, the um, uh, certificate and the diploma. The overlap is um, fairly minor. It is, it is there. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, it's really at most two courses out of the eight, but then in the data science uh, program, it, the way I would describe it is it's um, on steroids. So, um, you know, this at the graduate level, it's a graduate degree. There is a little bit of overlap, um, but, uh, you know, of course, it depends on what um, electives that you took. Um, I mean, if you if you took uh, all of the electives that happen to be uh, like paralleling what we're what we're offering in the data science, and there's going to be more overlap. So. Let me Ray. Let me jump in and add to that. Thanks for that great explanation. Uh, so there are students that are presently in our program who took the undergrad as an example uh, okay. in in business business analytics and. Uh, and I can speak to one of them, Ryan, who, who uh, you know, he decided to pivot and do a different specialization. Um, you know, so he's got really complementary skill sets now. He's got business analytics and then other data science skills, which are obviously, um, you know, a really nice tool set. He's, he's landed in the health data science stream, but um, has not complained about overlapping content thus far. Right. So that's a great that, example. So Tyler, that could be a, a great... Uh way to uh, you know to pivot uh, if you've done a business analytics undergrad you could go to the health data science if you're worried about the overlap or the data science uh i don't know exactly are we, are we calling that the double data science now i, mean, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> great does anybody have any other questions that uh, have not been answered in the chat or uh, on video here um i have a quick question sure um, I'm just wondering if the master's program is suited for students that are freshly out of their undergrad, or if you guys would encourage um, students to take time between their undergrad and doing the master's program. Well, uh, yeah, go ahead, Ray, you go first. No, that's an incredible question. And I, I don't want to steal anyone's uh, thunder. Uh, I would say it's not an issue. Um, you know, uh, especially with the internship component, it's going to, uh, you know, there's two ways that the internship works. One is that if, you're, if you've got a wealth of experience, 15, 20 years in the oil and gas sector or something like that, uh, it re, you retool and reposition and you pivot. If you're uh, a, a relatively younger person, uh, then um, it's going to um, propel you in, in your career. So it's going to train you where you, you know, don't have those 10 to 15 years of experience. Uh, it's, uh, I, I don't see the issue, but I'm, Tyler, you were, I, I cut you off there. And if I may chip in, uh, one other thing that you need to be thinking of is that uh, it has a lot to do with how much push you're bringing and how much curiosity you're bringing. Because uh, when you're coming out of your undergrad fresh, you, you have one idea and one of the big things that the data science, all the program, the health, the business and the data science in general is doing is really making it data science, right? Not just analytics, not just getting numbers uh, as, um, as Dustin mentioned, it's bringing the whole idea of what is the problem that you're looking at, what are the ideas, the stories you want to tell. And so being fresh from the undergrad may actually give you more hunger or have more doubts or try to see more the real world rather than textbook examples. So it's not, uh, it's not uh, you know, precluding you from doing great. And just as, uh, as, uh, as it was said, right? Also, if you have all the experience then you bring that with you. Great, thank you. Thanks, anybody else? Well, did we, uh, did we answer uh, Avin's uh question. Yes, you did. I just know some other master's programs either require work experience or it's encouraged, but um, you guys definitely answered it. Do you still have concerns about that? Um, no, I think you guys made it pretty clear that there's a balance of as long as you're not sort of burnt out from your undergrad, um, you're not disadvantaged to go right into the master's. So that's awesome. Thank you. 
you are great. Uh, I just had a question about the programming knowledge that we are required um, going into the program. Um, do we need to know a lot of programming or do the prerequisites basically prepare us well for the program already? So I'll, I'll take that one since um, I teach the Data 601 course where you're exposed to Python. Um, so uh, we do start with uh, the basics of Python, but it's, it's a very fast paced course. Uh, so the expectation is that students should already uh, have had exposure to programming. So that's the reason why the programming is a prerequisite uh, for, this, uh, for this program. So you do need a computer programming course because we are going at a very fast pace in Data 601. And then you're also you're using programming in your um, statistics courses as well. So uh, one of the courses there that um, Kerry posted uh, on, on chat, and you can also find this list uh, on, on our website. Uh, if you do not have the programming prerequisite, then you could take one of those uh, courses to fulfill the, the programming background. Great. Another question. Did that from... the question? Sorry. Yeah, that answered it. Um, I'm actually in a program that's um, teaching Java for my, that's meeting my prereq. Um, so would it be recommended that I like learn some of the uh, Python probably like it probably maybe help? Uh, no, Java. Java is fine. Uh, although we don't we don't uh, use Java in in the certificate, you, the two languages that you'll see are Python and and uh, R. But uh, so, see, the important thing is to be familiar with the basic concepts of programming, right? It's like variables, loops, um, how to structure your your program, how to write a program to do a certain thing. So if you're familiar with those concepts, then uh, you should be able to transition over to a different language in Python in this case, yeah. So just make sure that you have your fundamentals, uh, uh, the, the fundamentals really strong. Usman, would you add to that? The only thing that I might, we have seen that students that have um, more programming practice obviously won't, won't struggle with that aspect of it. Um, so, you know, the, re the prerequisites clear, any practice, any more courses you can take won't, won't hinder you, that's for sure. Yes, that's that's right. I mean, so you could uh, certainly on your own just just uh, practice, uh, gain more practice, and even learn learn the basics of uh, Python on, on your own if you think you already are meeting the prerequisite, but you want to get a head start. We also have a self assessment that we post online, and you can certainly have a look at that, and that'll uh, give you a sense of what sort of programming you're you're going to be doing in the certificate program. Great. We have. Uh... Another question from Ryan about the health um, data science diploma courses. He says, is there a course outline online for all of the health DS diploma courses? I've only seen one for data 621. So Tyler Alberto. I, I believe they're all online. If, uh, if for any reason you can't find them, Ryan, then, um, uh, then I can send them to you. Or Carrie says, I think Carrie just popped up and they're all there. But um, I, I believe they're all online. If you can't find them, let me know, Ryan, and I'll make sure you get them. Great. Sorry, I was referring to a different question, so I, I wish I was that helpful and quick. But oh, no. bad. I was like, that was amazingly fast, Carrie. Well, but I, yes, for sure. I thank yeah. you. Thank you, though. I appreciate the support. Yeah, you bet. We can get them to you. So Carrie did just post in the chat. If you guys want to all take a look, um, the link to the prerequisite self-assessment. So um, that should be pretty helpful on helping you make your decision. Um, okay, if anybody, are there any other questions? Um, I just have another quick question just regarding kind of like class sizes and how the formatting has been. Um, obviously, I assume it's been different with COVID um, or if they've been online or asynchronous, but do, does there any plan for what fall 21 would look like? Jim Usman. Well, I can I can answer part of that, and perhaps Usman can can uh, uh, assist me as well. Uh, this this fall term, all classes are online. Um, we are hoping we haven't. Uh, we're kind of using a wait and see attitude now uh, to see what happens with potential vaccinations. Um, but the hope is is that we would be offering the courses in the certificate and in the diploma in person in fall 2021. Of course, that uh, hugely depends on what happens with the pandemic. 
Um, but with respect to your class size, typically what happens is we do have full-time, uh, we do have full-time students in the program and we have part-time students in the program. We have students in the program that do do the program full-time that are working during the day. So typically what we do is for each class, so for example, in data 601 and data 602, the first two classes you take in the first six weeks of the fall 2021 semester, uh, we have an AM session and a PM session. So if you're working during the day, you can uh, attend the PM cohort or the PM session of 601 or 602. And if you're not working during the day, you can attend the register to the AM session of data 601 and data 602. So. Okay, and those sessions are synchronized then? You have to like tune in or? Uh, they would be if they're if they're in in person classes. Yes, the classes will be held on campus. So. Okay, thank you. Yep. And, and Jim, if they're online, and I, I missed uh, the class size part. What's the rough class size? Uh, this past fall, we had so I can speak to data six hundred two since I since I typically teach that course. We had about thirty seven in the PM session and about 32 in the morning session. So what we were doing with that class is we would have, uh, we would typically have, so whether it's the AM or the PM session, each class was three hours in length. But what we were doing is we were posting asynchronous material, giving the students approximately 75 minutes to go through the asynchronous material. And then immediately after, so for example, Tuesday morning from 10.30 to 11.45, uh, and Thursday morning from 10.30 to 11.45, I would hold a asynchronous class where essentially what we were doing is we were working with data um, to support the learning of the asynchronous piece. So, and I'll just, um, what I was doing. So. I'll just add to that and say uh, pre-COVID, I mean, we had a very similar sort of a, a model where the classes were kind of... Um, well, in person, but they were not all lecture. I mean, there's there's a first component where you're exposed to some concepts, and then uh, the rest of the class, you're it's just, it's fairly hands on, right? Well, would that be fair to say, Jim, uh, for your class as well? Yeah, I mean, uh, I I am I am of the belief that uh, listening to somebody chat for three hours is is not beneficial. So typically, what what we would do is we break down the three hour in person class into chunks talk about an idea for 10 minutes, and then we'd have you work on some data, or a specific, either a well-defined or a more general uh, data type of problem for about 15 or 20 minutes. And, and how the physical classes were structured is we had tables. So you're sitting at a hub of about four or five students and you're, you know, you're working with those students to work on a, an in-class problem. So yeah, sometimes we would hold like very, very small data thons or, or data solving problems in class. So we understand that the students in the program and even are, are working full-time or working part-time in addition to doing the courses. So we wanna to try to instill as, as an efficient teaching model as, as possible. So as I've said many times over, um, it's, it's much funner to, to actually step on the field and be a, be a participant than it is to stand on the sidelines and be a spectator. So, so that's what we try to do in the classrooms, face-to-face -face and and also if we, when we're delivering classes online. Excellent. Anybody else, last call? Okay, great. Well, if we didn't get to your question, um, please feel free to um, send an email to prograd.science at ucalgary.ca and Carrier Stephanie would be happy to help you out. And um, we are saving the Zoom chat just so we can keep people's names and, and maybe get back to you with some personalized information if you need to. Um, so thank you for joining us this afternoon and thank you to our special guests. Um, really appreciate your interest in the program. So uh, if you need to learn more, if you want to learn more, check out uh, the program website. It's science.ucalgary.ca slash data dash science. And, uh, or you can follow us on Twitter at U of C underscore science. And again, feel free to reach out with your questions at any time. Thank you guys so much. Hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you. Bye.